So this is the part that we're doing in person and we're also offering it virtually. So if it's virtual, it's going to be over Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It will feel just like this. It will be over Zoom, except instead of being a two to three hour class, it will be an all day long class. And we do have the schedule posted. I can let Ray and Gianni talk a little bit more about what topics are going to be covered. But the virtual side will be live. And just like before, virtual or in person, the classes will still be recorded, so you'll still have access to them after. Now, what I'm most curious about is who will be joining us in person, because I'm in the background over here organizing um, the dinners we're going to have, the welcome party, the lunches. So I'm curious, mostly my emails reaching out, what questions do you have about coming in person? So I just want to spend a few minutes talking a little bit about the schedule because it is going to be four days of us getting together. So the schedule we've listed out begins actually a day earlier on June 1st. Now we know most people do not live in Troy, Michigan, so I'm expecting almost everyone to have to fly in who's going to come in person. So I would recommend flying into the Detroit airport either that Wednesday night or Thursday morning. For those who are coming in Thursday morning or Wednesday night, I have scheduled an art tour museum for us at Cranbrook. So if you haven't looked up Cranbrook, look it up. I think it's a 600 acre property. It's beautiful. They have tours of the gardens, the art museum. It's a whole showcase of schools there. So that's kind of our welcome activity. It's happening Thursday afternoon for those who want to join us. It's optional. So if you see that your flight, that's like the perfect time, doesn't leave till after you get off work Thursday, it's okay. You're not going to be missing class content. It's just an optional tour, a chance for us to get together and have lunch after. And then in the evening at the Embassy Suites Hotel, we do have a welcome cocktail reception set up, and we have that set up at 6 p.m. And again, it's optional. So if your flight gets delayed or you can't get off work on time, you're not going to be missing a learning content, but this is another opportunity to pick up your welcome packet, actually meet Ray Gianni, myself, face-to-face, -face, along with other students as well. And then classes do begin on Friday in the morning. So classes begin at 9.30 in the morning. We do have a shuttle that's going to be arranged to take students and clients from the hotel over to the conference center. It's about a five-minute drive, so if you wanted to transport yourself there, I wouldn't recommend walking. When we did this before, I think everyone opted to take the shuttle together. It was pretty easy, pretty seamless. They'll wait for you. Um, and I'll have that all organized. And then it's basically like going back to school again. We will be in a big classroom amphitheater for those who have joined us before or maybe watched the videos before or even seen the pictures on our website. It really looks like you're in a college classroom again. You're seated at, you know, shared desks, and there's Gianni and Ray presenting up front. And we've put together the schedule about the lessons that are going to be covered. I think we're up to 19 right now, um, but I'll let Ray and Gianni share that a little more. Every day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, will be run a little bit similar. We'll have about an hour and a half of class, then a 15-minute break with snacks. Um, we will definitely have coffees, water set up, all, all the things. There's, you know, plugs there, Wi-Fi if you need to be checking your work email. So it's definitely friendly for adult learners. And then we'll have lunches together at 1 o'clock every day at the conference center. So there's nothing you need to do or plan in terms of the basic necessities, how to get there, what to eat. All I need to know is if you'll be joining us and if there's any special things I need to know. I know there's some... Um, some students of ours who might need have certain dietary restrictions, those are the type of things I really want to know to help make this a success for you because it is a group experience. However, we're all individuals here. So I really want to know if you will be joining us, how I can support you in that way so that you're not hungry, you're not thirsty, you're not worried about where you're going to stay. Um, I'm basically your concierge here. So anything that comes up, even if it seems a little unusual, We've heard it before. I've dealt with it before. Tell me your questions. So after lunch, we'll come back and most days we'll have another one or two lessons and then we'll have another afternoon snacks. Very big on taking those snack breaks, just time to step away, walk outside, get some fresh air. And then we'll have about one more lesson or discussion to close out the day. 
and class will end every day between 5 and 5.30, and then we'll have the shuttle take us back to the hotel again. Um, Friday, I feel it's a full day, so after classes, we don't have an organized event. Go home, sleep, go to dinner, you know, catch up, whatever you need to do. Saturday night's a little different. Saturday, we do have a big group dinner organized that night at 7 p.m., so that's at one of our favorite restaurants, Silver Spoon. Um, Gianni is a big fan, raised been there a hundred times. I've been there once, love the food, can't complain, super accommodating for big groups. But again, if you have any questions, if you, you know, certain foods you don't like, please let me know so we can work with you and we can work with the owners and make sure it's a menu that works for you as well as the group. Um, Sunday, our final day, same general morning schedule, lunch, snacks. And then we kind of lead a bit more that day of talking. Um, well, I'll let Gianni and Ray talk about that, but much more open discussions, what's going on with the markets right now. That's when we kind of lead into the investment retreat part of this course. So it isn't just Gianni and Ray talking to you. That's where we get the open dialogue, the open discussion before we close out our weekend. And I know a lot of people have told me they have afternoon flights that day. so making sure that you tell me your flight time so I can make sure if you do need transportation back to the hotel or need the hotel to hold on to your bags up front, I can help you with that or even grab your bags, bring them to you. So that's the general outline we have set up for MMTA course two. Just really want to stress that it's different than these other courses where these are spread out over five to six Saturdays. This is all in one four-day weekend. And it is in person, but if you cannot travel, if you have, you know, living far away, just simply not wanting to travel, it will all still be virtual. It will be recorded and broadcasted on Zoom real time, just like this meeting is right here. And just like before, you're still going to get the class recording. So if you can't make it different time zone, you're in Australia and you can't simply make a 4 a.m. class. No big deal. That night, that's my job to make sure the recordings are available for you. So if you cannot be in there, if an event comes up in the way preventing you to be live, you're still going to get those class recordings just like you do here in the Saturday classes. So then Ray and Gianni, do you want to spend a little bit of time talking about the topics that will be covered? I know I talk a lot about logistics on my side and making the logistics side work for you, but I think you can only get so much out of reading this schedule I put together. And last time it was hard to put into words what really makes this feel different about the, the conversation piece. So Ray and Gianni, do you want to talk a little bit about the topics that we plan to cover in course two? Let yeah. me ask you, first of all, uh, uh, Ali, um, logistics. How do they get from the airport to the uh, center? By the way, forgive me for the... Uh, pinhole glasses, but if I can't see straight still. It's going to be another few weeks, so bear with me. But Ali, how do they get from the airport to the um, hotel? Thank you for asking that question. So transportation is on your own. In the past, as we got closer, a lot of students would ask me if there were other people arriving at similar times so they could share a cab. So Detroit, big city, they have cabs, they have Uber, they have Lyfts, they have rental cars. Not big city in the sense that they have like trains though, not that type of city. So <laughs> definitely different than New York, right? So I would recommend doing a ride share program like Uber, Lyft, or a taxi. And I did put that information on the handout. Um, if you do want to have your own car and rent a car, I know a few students did that as well. If they plan to travel around after or simply wanted their own flexibility. There's a link on that handout as well. There are different rental car companies. If you wanted to rent a car yourself, that's certainly an option. But if you're simply knowing that, you know, I'm good, I just want to go right to the hotel and I'll rely on myself to get around after, Uber, Lyft, Taxi Cab, all those are available out, out in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, at least one student who's looking for somebody to share one of the suites with. Embassy Suites is... Uh, uh, has either two bedrooms or two beds in it. So if anybody is looking to share a room, uh, also let Abby know that and she'll put you in touch with uh, another student who's also interested. Mm -hmm. Overall, the rooms are quite spacious. It's sweet. So 
you have a lot of space. Um, it's not a resort where you have to walk from building to building, so it's all together. And then I, I think something that was really cool last year, which a lot of hotels don't have, they do have breakfast in the morning served for all guests in the hotel. And then after class, we didn't really mention it last time, but it seemed like everyone gathered for cocktail hour after. They have an open cocktail hour right after class. So um, it's no surprise that our dinner is at seven, not right after class, so that students can meet together for free happy hour um, in the lobby. So it's a really nice setup hotel for a group setting like this. Lots of opportunities to get to know each other. Um, and I do want to mention, I didn't mention it before, that we do have a room block reserved. So if you were going on their website and trying to book a hotel yourself and you're thinking, Allie, you keep telling me $149, it's like $236 on the website. Email me. I'll make sure you have the right link so you can book at the group rate we have because it is discounted from what you'll see on the website. But as Ray said, if you also were interested in sharing a room with someone, please let me know so I can do my work in the background to match people together, or at least give each other options if someone else is looking interested in sharing a room as well. Very good. And just to make sure, um, although there's a strong social aspect, that's valuable for getting together personally and meeting one another. Uh, we don't want to underscore the importance of the courses, of the classes. There are somewhere between 15 and 19 classes, as Ali mentioned, and you will be expected to understand um, the characteristics, the, uh, the points we're making each class, because you will be tested after that. Within the week after that, you have to take a test. So uh, don't miss the classes if you and don't think that by coming to this is just a chance to meet people. Yes, you're going to meet one another, and that is very important. But um, again, the most important thing is the material that you're going to be learning uh, on investments related to uh, geocosmics. So this course is um, geocosmic signatures correlating to investment cycles. That means we're looking at long-term planetary cycles, whether there's long older planets, in signs correlating with long-term cycle highs and lows, or it's long-term planetary aspects involving Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, even Jupiter, and their correlation to long-term uh, cycles, uh, lows and highs. So this course, you're learning about how to identify cycle lows and highs and what type of cycle lows and highs they are, long-term, intermediate, short-term. But the next step is course two, finding the overlap time bands between when the cycles say a higher low is due long-term and the overlap of the planetary cycles in effect during the uh, rhythmic cycles of the market, because that'll help narrow that cycle time band down from an 18 year or four year or six year cycle considerably when you see what the geocosmics are that correlate with those types of long-term cycles. So that's what I'm gonna be covering mostly in this course. Uh, also, we, we, we will have a trading aspect to this course. We'll be covering some trading cycles because we do that every class. Every class that we have, we Jan and I end up with a discussion what we think is happening next week. We'll be doing that too um, at this course, um, probably on Sunday, maybe during the class, during the courses themselves, during the classes themselves this course. We'll cover short-term uh, analysis and outlook but make no mistake, the, the major focus of this course is the correlation of long-term planetary uh, planets in signs and planetary aspects to long-term cycles. Very, very important for investments. And we want to stress the investments because as you saw last week and you'll see this week, it's the investment cycles. The understanding of investment cycles is going to make the difference of your ability to build wealth through the stock market. Uh, the short term, you're going to have highs and lows. You're going to have periods you do very well and periods where, you know, your judgment isn't so good. But if you're focused on the long-term cycles and you get in near the lows when those time bands are due for long-term cycles and you get out near the highs, you're going to beat. You're going to beat most. You're going to meet, beat the averages. You're going to beat uh, most of the other analysts if you can discipline yourself to do that. And that's the purpose, of course, too. Johnny, I turn over to you now. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ray and Allie, for uh, those explanations. I do just want to 
run briefly uh, through the overview of how we're going to run course two in person. So um, <clears throat> Friday and Saturday will be the the way we have it structured now. Those will be the course content days. Um, there will be a brief period on Saturday where Ray and I uh, take questions based on the uh, current market environment, but uh, the market outlook part of the course and the more lively discussion part will be on Sunday. Um, and that's uh, going to be the time to where, you know, we're giving you two days worth of information, but we basically allocate an entire day for questions. So again, we don't want you to feel like we're rushing through the material. Um, so we're going to dedicate an entire day to discussion. Now, just so that you're not uh, listening to Ray and I speak the entire time, we are going to have two guest speakers there. We're going to have Kat Powell, uh, who was one of the original MMTA graduates, speak, uh, do a presentation on Saturday on Pluto sign correlations to long-term cycles in financial markets. Um, and then on Sunday, um, we're going to have uh, Rita Perea speak, um, who is an MMTA2 graduate. She's going to talk about the role of psychology and financial market timing. Um, so that's going to be a, a very good um, presentation as well. So, you know, we want to bring uh, some outside information as well into the program. Um, but as Ray uh, said, and I will emphasize, you know, this is um, part of the course, so there's going to be a lot of information. But for those of you with an astrology background, uh, I think you will enjoy it especially. Um, and for those uh, with not an astrology background, you're going to have to be extra attentive. So um, that's all I think that we needed to cover uh, with respect to course two. So uh, Ali, thank you so much again for that, and uh, Ray as well.